Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot, and welcome back to another episode of my series on building a small layout. This layout is called The Grunge, and while the first two episodes were about planning, the last episode was finally about building, specifically the bench work. We're going to continue in that vein today in this episode as we talk about a backdrop for the layout. I'm a big believer in backdrops to maintain the illusion that your layout, big or small, is not just a model. When viewing a layout, my eye expects there to be some type of scenery, or at least a sky, behind what I'm looking at so that it doesn't seem like the whole thing just ends. You know what? This is silly. It's a gorgeous spring day, and I'm down here in the basement talking about backdrops. Let's go outside. I personally believe you need a background of some sort to continue the suspension of disbelief. I mean, the sky is not wood paneling covered with pictures and memorabilia. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Seriously, though, in my opinion, a backdrop is a must-have for a layout. And in this episode, we'll talk about how I made and mounted mine for the grunge. If you want to see more in this series, as well as other videos with information about model railroading, including planning, hints, tips, how-tos, and updates, click on the subscribe button. Click on the bell so you'll get notified when there is new content available. And if you click the thumbs up to like this video now, you won't have to worry about it later. This all helps get my videos in front of more people, so thank you in advance. This video is made possible by the generous support of Dave Myers at GatorFoam.net, who supplied the Gator Foam used for this project. I hope this video will convince you of the flexibility and usefulness of Gator Foam and that you will support Dave. His contact information will be included in the description below. I keep using this term backdrop. For the beginners in the audience, a backdrop is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as a large piece of cloth with buildings, countryside, etc. painted on it, hung at the back of a stage during a performance. Or the view behind something. For model railroading purposes, our backdrops combine a bit of both definitions. But at its core, it's something that prevents you from seeing the real world behind your models. It can be as simple as having a blue background at the rear of your layout, whether painted directly on the wall, like I do with my Monument City Terminal Division, or an added board like we'll be doing here. For those who aren't great with a paintbrush, like me, there are also any number of backdrop photos available. Just search the web. In my opinion, your scene is not complete without a backdrop. As I mentioned, if I can see a wall or people behind the models, the illusion shattered for me. Even the simple blue background goes a long way towards making your layout scene more realistic. Backdrop photos, like the one I used for the video thumbnail for my MCTD layout overview video, can go a long way towards defining your setting and your layout's place in the world. For the grunge, we're going to be using a blue painted backdrop and some building photos to provide a sense of depth. As you may have guessed, much like the benchwork itself, we're going to use gator foam for constructing the backdrop. Then we'll be attaching the backdrop to the benchwork with some screws so that it stays solidly attached. I wanted the backdrop to be as tall as possible. These sheets are just shy of 16 inches tall, and I'll be attaching them one inch below the top of the benchwork. With the sub road bed, which we'll be talking about in the next episode, measuring in at half an inch, I should have about 14 and 3 8 inch height on my backdrop. I'm trying to avoid attaching the two sides of the backdrop together so that the layout will be easy to disassemble and move if I need to, but we'll see how that goes. The first step, as you can see here, is to paint the backdrop boards. If you'll recall, they were pre-cut by Gator Dave before he shipped them to me, so with some paint I was ready to go. My paint mixture is a combination of light blue and white paint. It's my mixture number three used in the fading ombre effect I use on the main layout. As you can see, I put on a few coats to make sure there was good coverage. Given the size of this layout and the fact that much of the bottom of the backdrop would be covered by photos, I didn't see the benefit of using the fading effect. But you may want to. You may want to paint on a less windy day than I did, though. Right at the end, both panels did their best to just fly away. Next, I added some additional bracing to the benchwork. Using the same 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch wood that I used in the corners of the frame, I cut six two-inch sections and attached them to the top rear of the benchwork so that I would have something solid to screw into. I attached these with adhesive, clamped it together to ensure they stayed in place while it dried, and let it sit for a few hours. This is the same method I used to assemble the main benchwork. First thing that we'll do is remove all these clamps, make sure things are solid, feels pretty good. Okay. 
I'm now going to mark the back of the backdrop so that I know exactly where one inch is. This ruler happens to be exactly one inch, so that will work out very well for my purposes. Next I want to mark a center line where the screws are going to go in and this is going to this line will extend below the level of the backdrop there and that's so that uh, I'll be able to see that line uh, when I have the backdrop in place as well which is going to be important. I'm going to make the same markings on the back of the backdrop so that I'll be able to line those up. going to be important for making sure that when I drill everything is in the right spot. For drilling purposes it will be important to know where that one inch is. So I'm marking that as well. And then on the front I actually need to do a slightly different line which we'll talk about in a second. So on the front I'm going to be putting a line at one and a half inches and the reason for that is is I want a, a light line on the bottom and that's where I'm going to line the bottoms of the photos to for the backdrop. So this will help me ensure that everything is lined up correctly when I go to put those on. So I'm not going to drill the holes for the backdrop to attach to up here. You can see that down at the bottom I've clamped this to the the uh, saw horses here to make sure that it doesn't fall over because as we attach these I'm going to clamp the, the backdrop on there I want to make sure that uh, nothing falls down. This would really be helpful with two hands. That ain't going to work. So we're going to get uh, some larger clamps is what we're going to do. As you can see, especially if you're going to be working by yourself, clamps are a very handy thing to have and have numbers of them in different sizes. Now we should be able to drill. I'll be using number six one and a quarter inch screws to attach these and I'm going to pre-drill the holes mostly because this is some pretty thin stock here and if you don't pre-drill it it's going to most likely split and won't help you out at all. I'm going to try and put two holes in here, one on each side of the center line and we'll go from there. Rinse and repeat. I decided to put photos on the backdrop for some depth. I found these on textures.com and used them to create a long building in Photoshop. This would represent a huge factory on the street behind the layout that would run the length of the entire thing. While most of the backdrop will be blocked by structures, having this photo run the length of the layout means that no matter where there are gaps, the backdrop building will show through. This means I don't have to know exactly where the layout structures are going to be located, which is a good thing as I haven't completely figured out all of the structures yet. I didn't add a lot of detail on the building because the key is to make sure that the backdrop doesn't take away from the models in the front. I did scale it down slightly though to use a bit of forced perspective. If you'd like to see a video on how I created this backdrop building, please let me know in the comments below. After printing the photos out and cutting them to size, I glued them to the backdrop with adhesive spray waiting the three to five minutes per the instructions to try and make them removable if I need to. As you can see here, I didn't apply quite enough adhesive spray the first time, so I had to go back and add some more and then wait another couple minutes before applying. I removed the bubbles using a 3M hand applicator squeegee, but you could do this with a credit card or other stiff plastic as well.
We'll repeat this process for the second panel before we assemble everything. Okay, with the backdrop photos attached, we can now assemble everything using the screws. I have once again attached the bench work to the saw horses with clamps, and I am now going to also clamp on the backdrop before I attempt to screw it in. If you have a helper, uh, this step would not be necessary, of course, but I do not have one today. There. Once again, using the one and a quarter inch long number six wood screws with flat heads, I am going to screw this in. I'm screwing these in just so that it breaks the first veneer. If you recall, I put the wood block underneath so that it would have something solid to screw into. This backdrop should not go anywhere. We'll repeat this for the other side. Should be good to go. Here, there is an uneven spot here. I'm going to have to take a look at that. Okay, so as you can see, I have fixed that problem. I will show you how I did it. I removed the two screws that I had in that end, uh, lined up the top of the backdrop with the other side, drilled a new hole, and screwed it in with a single screw. I believe that will hold. So there it is, the benchwork with backdrop in place. As I said in the last video, Gator Foam really is a great material to work with, providing a stable and lightweight backdrop. If you're looking for such a material for building models, structures, or other items, including backdrops, you can't go wrong with Gator Foam. If you're interested, please support my sponsor and visit GatorFoam.net, or give Dave Myers a call. Don't forget to mention that you saw it on a video from Joe Parker and the Pixel Depot. With the main bench work and backdrop done, next we'll tackle the sub roadbed and track. That's all for this episode. I hope, now that we have a solid structure in place, that this has inspired you and you're in the process of building your own small layout, because that's what this series is all about. If you have suggestions or questions, include them in the comments below. And again, if you'd like to see a video on how I created the backdrop building photos, please let me know in the comments. Finally, if you enjoyed this video and think others would like it as well, click the thumbs up to like it. YouTube determines how often to offer up a video based on the number of likes, comments, and views. So doing all those things will help put this channel in front of a wider audience. Thank you in advance. I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room.